national championships than Virginia. But the devil is in the detail. And the Blue Devils of Duke have held dominion over their ACC rivals. Duke has won 21 of the last 23 against Virginia. And tonight, Connor Schellenberger will try to give the Cavs their first regular season win against Duke in almost two decades. A slight drizzle and overcast skies here in Charlottesville. It's the ACC on ESPN, but that cannot damper a heavyweight Friday night matchup. Number four Duke meets number one Virginia. Both teams looking to stay unbeaten in the ACC. Welcome to Clockner Stadium in East Rock. Quint Kesnick. What is so unique about this matchup, this rivalry, is as good as these two teams have been in the last 20 years, it's been so lopsided. And it's really amazing. Uh, the two teams have combined for seven national titles, yet Virginia has struggled to beat Duke in, in the last 23 times. They've only beat them twice. Duke has owned this series. And it, amazingly so, the teams have played similar styles. They're both big, fast, strong, athletic, offensive juggernauts. I think the difference in the series, though, has been Duke's settled offense dissecting Virginia's defense over the past two decades. Virginia's only two wins since the start of 2005 against Duke. One came in the 2010 ACC tournament, 2019 ACC semifinal, or national semifinal, a game that Duke had with a minute to go. Two goal lead and the ball with under two minutes to go. Star power has been a constant in this matchup. Uh, Brendan O'Neill, the big lefty from Long Island, he can beat you with power, he can beat you with skill. Connor Schellenberger's superpower, he can see the future. He can forecast player and spatial movements and be a step ahead of this game. The face-off matchup will be a fun one today. Jake Naso, number two in the nation. Petey Lasala, he's now in the all-time discussion. Weather here notable, Anish. Quite honestly, it's a twister right now. The wind blowing from right to left at 20 to 30 miles an hour, and it is starting to rain pretty good. It will impact the surface. It will impact communication. Petey Lasala wins the opening draw for Virginia, for the number one offense in the country. Cavaliers average more than 18 goals per game. They shoot it at 38%. Both marks tops in the country, and they'll trot out their first midfield. It's Jeff Connor, Griffin Schutz. And Thomas McConvey, the Vermont transfer. Connor Schellenberger won an orange. The maestro of the offense, the national leader in assists, and defended well by Kenny Brower. Duke defensively has been one of the better teams in the country. The Blue Devils on a seven-game win streak. Here's Peyton Cormier. He's got the short stick matchup. Cormier looking to initiate, shoots, and the save made by the Kaiser, William Helm. That's what Duke wants Cormier to do. Ronnie Caputo, Duke's defensive coordinator, has successfully put the short stick, which usually goes on a midi, on attackman Peyton Cormier. Virginia has taken the bait. Virginia, one of the best riding teams. Now Duke's got to hurry. They got to get it over the midfield line before the shot clock hits 60. They do not. That's a live ball turnover. That's Quick a big, restart, here's Saladay. That's a big storyline in this game. Can Virginia's ride give them extra possessions? But going back, the short stick on Cormier, and as I say, Virginia has taken the bait in niche, and they've run their offense through Peyton as a ball carrier. That's not his role. He's an off-ball shooter. So in doing that, and the reaction, Duke wins. There come shots down the alley, and Schellenberger, the backup, closest to the ball when it goes out. Awarded possession off a shot. Brower, the last time out, held Schellenberger without a goal. Here comes Jeff Connor. He's got the short stick matchup. Bounce shot. That one's turned away. Loose in front. It's a nice save by Helm. 
this is a young man who's got to be pinching himself. A year ago, he was playing at St. Lawrence, a good D3 school in southern Canada. Well, he shows up for an extra year at Duke. He earns the starting role, and you walk out on the field today, you're like, is this really true? I'm starting in a Duke-Virginia game. Unbelievable well, success playing story. Playing the number one team in the country, and Duke able to clear, looking to get this offense its first touch. Blue Devils coming off a win against St. Joe's. And this offense, this top six, really for both these teams, as good as you'll find. Here's the freshman, Charlie Balsamo. Beats Saladay and wheels it behind the cage to Brennan O'Neill, the nation's leading point scorer. He beats Sawstead, O'Neill beats Noons, and Duke on the board first. Something clicked after the Devils took down Syracuse in the Dome in overtime, a game which they hit 15 pipes. And in their last handful of games, watching this team on tape, it's the best I've seen Duke's offense since the Jordan Wolf era. And that was back in, what, 2015-ish? O'Neal, one-on-one, can be unstoppable. He curls to his strong left hand, and that'll set the tempo because Virginia now will have to double team the big man. O'Neal in two career games against Virginia has been unstoppable. Seven goals, six assists. And there's a shot off the faceoff by LaSala. And the third save early by Helm. We saw it when Maryland beat Virginia on this field a couple of weeks ago. If you're going to beat Virginia, you need great goalie play. Helm has gotten better and better each week. You can just see his poise and confidence growing bigger. We covered him earlier in this year, a, a Duke-Denver game. He was eh, he was eh. He's gotten better every week. Now, Quinta, you mentioned the field surface at Clockner. Sunny day, you get a nice hard bounce with the rain. How does it change? Well, I, I think the fear here is, is defensive footwork. This is Owen Caputo, veteran midfielder against Scott Bauer. Now Dyson Williams, one of the top goal scorers in the country. O'Neal, dangerous from that high wing. Backpedaling against Sawstead. Still plenty of time to shoot. Virginia plays man-to-man -man defense. They are slow to help defense. McAdory, weaving his way through traffic. O'Neal, the skip pass, and that will be a turnover. You can see that ball skim out of bounds. So as this surface now gets wet, advantage to the shooter with outside bouncers, because the ball really skim. As a goalie, what are you conscious about when the surface gets wet? Well, you, you, A, your foot, your own footwork in your crease. You know, what, what, are you playing in mud? Or, or do you have good traction? Do you have good push off? And then B, what type of bounces? A, a, a fast field like this, a, a sidearm shot will stay low. The ball will skim, be a worm burner. An overhand shot will really accelerate and take a big hop, and, and you've got to adjust your arc in the crease. Here Person. comes Schutz. He had the short stick matchup. Now Peter Garno. Now for Virginia, this is the gauntlet, Quint. They played Maryland, Notre Dame, now Duke. Three straight top four matchups. Last week they had it humming. Arlotta Stadium in front of about 5,000 fans. The offense ran through Connor Schellenberger, number one in Arch. Garno dumps it back to McConvey. He's got a 60-game point streak going. Today, more of their offense has to be generated through their midfielders because Kenny Brower can match paces with Schellenberger. Schellenberger this time against Stevenson. Shot clock down to five. Schellenberger eyes up, feeding inside. Dixon's got to put it on goal. Easy save for Helm. And let's see if Duke can run. That is super stout defense by Duke. Winning the matchup on the perimeter against the ball. They don't have to double team or support. McAdory across the midfield line and picked up a few bruises from Kastner. Andrew McAdory, 5'9", Cole Kastner, 6'7". Aiden Denenza falling down. That hit Sawstead in the shoulder. Wow. Somebody lost a stick. Bent in half. And the refs are letting him play for sure. Yeah, Duke's got a man advantage. Ledman fires a rocket. The fifth-year senior has played like an All-American in 2023.
tempo and playmaking, what separates this series from the rest. Balls on the carpet. You see the broken, bent stick in half. So Virginia's got to sub a player out. They're a man short. Great look by O'Neal. He skips it through the defense, and Anishu nailed it. Garrett Ledman is playing like a boss. He is playing like a first-round draft pick in the Premier Lacrosse League. In the last four or five games, he cannot miss. Confidence is oozing. Clearly, he hasn't got, had, had a haircut either as, as he goes through this hot streak. It worked for Sampson. Here comes LaSala. He's doubled, and Virginia will call a timeout. Quint, the Duke Hex is very real for this Virginia program. The alums have talked to the players, and early on, it's been a redux of the last 20 years. Spicy chicken fries, chicken fries with heat. Appetizer mini meal, a spicy treat. Eat them anytime, cause you're royalty. The box fits a sauce that's pretty neat. BK, have it your way. Metro offers MLS season pass. On us. What about for existing customers? Yup. Every, Every match? match? I bet, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Says it on the poster. <laughs> Plus, get unlimited 5G for $25. Now at Metro. Brennan O'Neill came to Duke as one of the most hyped high school recruits of all time. Tall order, he has lived up to it this season, leading the nation in points. He's the fastest Duke player in program history to 100 goals. He was also selected for Team USA. That, that is the senior team. Okay, that, 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 those are pros, and Brennan O'Neill made that squad. And rarely have we seen a combination of strength, precision, creativity, and, and now you're seeing the leadership component where, as he's taking control of games, as he is directing his teammates. He, his game has offered a lot of stability for those around him. Uh, John Donowski telling us he and Andrew McAdory on that attack play with a ton of humility. Great feed, and Xander Dixon had a look. Backhanded shot offline. Virginia now 0 for 6, but you just saw a staple of this Virginia offense, the interior passing. Last week, they shredded Notre Dame with five goals from the crease. You could say six if you count the Dixon rebound goal. Patrick McIntosh, who had six goals against Hopkins, is out there. Now Cormier, he's dodging and he scores. Duke daring him to be a dodger. And the big Canadian says, I'm going to get mine. Talking to offensive coordinator Sean Kerwin of Virginia. He related that last week they attacked Notre Dame from behind the goal using a lot of picks. Today it would be the opposite. You'll see more of the offense run through midfielders. And he was confident that Peyton Cormier as a ball carrier could make some noise. Rain continuing to come down. The wind is starting to pick up. Players sliding on the field, and Petey LaSala wins the race to the ball. Here comes LaSala. He'll play offense. Now Mitchell Whalen, body saved by Helm. Outlet the other way. Stevenson. Wilson Stevenson, a great comeback story, suffered a devastating leg injury in that 2019 quarterfinal against Notre Dame. Multiple surgeries, months and months of rehab, and now he's playing like one of the top poles in the ACC. Incredible perseverance. But he had his coach, John Donowski, screaming on the sideline, Wilson! Like Dennis the Menace, O'Neal picks it off. Here comes McAdory, O'Neal's high school teammate. McAdory last year set the Duke freshman record for points from the midfield. Now Ledman, he's got a short stick. Over to O'Neal. Okay, this offense, Anish, clicking right now. Why? All the parts fit together, all the puzzle pieces. You got two really quick Dodgers in Balsamo and McAdory. You got the finisher in Dyson Williams. You got the generational talent in Brennan O'Neill. You got Ledman playing like a boss. It, it's all working together. Here comes McAdory. Now he's picked up by the short stick Saladay. McAdory toward the cage, bounces it. 
able to retrieve. Out of bounds, it will stay Great with Duke. The shot clock resets to 60. The goalie got a piece of it. Matthew Nunes in goal for Virginia. He played better last time out against Hopkins after struggling against three Maryland teams in succession. From the wing, Ledman with a laser, and he fires up this Duke crowd. And there is a little bit of a Duke contingent here at Klockner, and it's 3-1 Blue Devils. Garrett Ledman set all sorts of scoring records at DeMatha, surpassing Paul Rabel. Last week, I texted Paul. I said, I'm watching, I'm watching your guy Garrett Ledman, and he is playing like a pro. And Paul texted me back one word, confidence. Confidence is gigantic for offensive midfielders. John Donowski, soaking wet, three-time national champion, was telling us a story this week how many years ago when he was in his 20s, he was hoping to get a teaching job at Manhasset High School, didn't get it, was devastated. And the detour became quite the destination. He was a 27-year-old, he ends up coaching at CW Post as an assistant under Tony Seaman. Seaman moves on to Penn, and Donowski gets that head job at CW Post. Had a lot of success before taking the head coaching job at Hofstra. And there is a heavy Long Island flavor on this Duke roster. McAdory shakes Kastner, fires low, kick save Nunes, rebound O'Neal, fresh 60. O'Neal going to work on the fifth year senior, Cade Sostick. Ryan McKenzie, number 35 in there for Duke. Here's McAdory. He's got shake against the shorty Connor, skips it wide. It's very Duke-like, Ryan McKenzie. Uh, you, you, you talk to the coaches, they mentioned Jack Papendick, they mentioned Grant Mitchell. We've seen Jaden Carey this year, Aiden McGuire, O'Connor. It's always somebody. They always throw this random midfielder out there. Virginia with the cause turnover. And now Whalen trying to get rid of it. Nunes excels in the clearing game, dumps it over and gives it back to Duke. Hidden ball trick, Dyson Williams has it! Dyson Williams. Well, Dyson Williams, senior captain, Two goals in every game a, this season except the last he just one. Missed, he missed the net. And he, she, he had Nunes. Nunes didn't see it. There comes McKenzie. Nice shake there by Mitchell. What I like about Duke's offense, talked about the parts, but this is the second midfield group. They're still spinning the ball, like a great ball reversal. Typically this year, it's been a wing attack, change fields to the far side, and then re-attack. Five turnovers now for Duke. Fifty in orange on the offensive half of the field. He won't get a touch. Virginia turns it over. That's three turnovers for the Cavaliers. Fifty in orange. Ricky Miazon, the former Stanford linebacker, that one Cardinal that captain, looked like the, maybe the, the moisture from the rain impacted the pocket or the shooting strings. It, it just never came out right. But we're going to see that today. Rain has been steady really from the get-go. Uh, there's a swirling wind as well. Now Ledman, who's got two goals. Ledman draws the pole. He's still going to the cooker pretty hard. He played defensive midfield most of the last two years. Began his career on the offensive midfield. Now O'Neal, dusting Sawstead, fires! That one hit the pipe. The rebound to Ledman, new 60. Wow, that, that's unbelievable. His quickness has never been better. Brennan O'Neill, 34 in white. 
Scary shot on the run, overhand. Denenza eyeing up the short sticks in. Denenza slips. McAdory headed. He loses his footing. Here's the double team. And that Virginia defense comes away with it. on when he touches the ball there's a different energy at Klockner you hear the buzz you hear it you heard it as soon as he touched the ball 6 2 235 pounds former number one overall recruit in lacrosse had originally committed at one point to North Carolina to play football and lacrosse right-handed good wheels a blistering shot now shuts. He was 0 for 5 against Notre Dame. Yard sale and his stick knocked out of his hands. Probably the biggest upgrade in Duke this year has been their defensive midfielders, Jack Gray, Aiden McGuire, and Charlie O'Connor. O'Connor, number 12, gives it back. Now a chance for Virginia the other way. Miazon overran it. Dixon is there. Everybody's slipping. Footing has been hard to come by so far. Both teams sloppy. Dixon had the big game last week, 10 and orange. But right now, Duke's winning the matchups on the perimeter. They haven't had to double or slide, meaning Dixon's just getting face guarded inside, and he's having no impact. And Connor Schellenberger, in the few possessions Virginia's had, has not really had a chance to get the offense going. At its simplest analytics, Beat your man, score a goal. That's what lacrosse is. Beat your man, score a goal. Here's Cormier. He'll try to do that. Another save by Helm. And Virginia in the crease. It belongs to Duke. That is six saves in the opening quarter by the former D3 All-American. That's the look that Duke is willing to live with. The ball's not being touched by Schellenberger, McConvey, or Dixon. They're giving it to Cormier, and their long-term plan is that they'll win more of those than they'll lose. Dixon, Jordan loose from Stevenson, battle for the ground ball. Caputo giving chase. And Duke could not get it over the timeline before that clock hit 60. So Virginia wins it back off the ride as we come up on a minute to play. First quarter, 3-1 Duke. The Blue Devils have won 16 in a row in the regular season against Virginia. The Cavaliers' last win in this matchup came in 2004, last regular season win, when current Duke assistant Matt Donowski was 18 years old. He's now 37. Doorstep, Connor to Dixon. It's the Slim Reaper getting one back for Virginia. Cheats ball side. They think they may have to help. And Dixon, who started behind the net, curls right handed to the near post and beats Helm to the punch. Great look by Connor. Lars Tiffany has told us many times beating Duke matters. It's one of the few things he's not been able to do consistently since taking over as Virginia's head coach. He has the one win, it's a big one in the 2019 national semifinal, a game in which Virginia rallied from down two in the final minute to win in double overtime on an Ian Laviano goal. His assistant, Kip Turner, told us earlier this week, things need to change. So far, they haven't changed enough. If you're John Donowski, he was pointing out that, hey, his guys know that if you don't play well against Virginia, they can make you look bad. And so this game brings out the best, and always has. This game brings out the best in Duke. Oh, Ledbin almost got some bystanders. Final five seconds. Dyson Williams pass tipped into the air. And the first quarter comes to an end. It's Duke three, Virginia two. Brennan O'Neill. The junior star for the Blue Devils, a goal and an assist in the opening quarter. Garrett Ledman found the back of the net twice for Duke. 3 2. Blue Devils on top of Clockner.
Best part about a nugget? There's seven more. The Popeye's Big Box. Choose two pieces of our signature bone-in chicken or our eight-piece white meat nuggets. Pick two regular sides and a biscuit flakier than Auntie Denise for just $6.99. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Metro offers MLS season pass. On us. But what about for existing customers? Yep. Every, Every match? match? I bet, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Says it on the poster. <laughs> Plus, get unlimited 5G for $25. Now at Metro. Two programs that have had enormous success since 2006. That was the year Virginia went undefeated. It was the year Duke canceled its season after the false allegations against members of its lacrosse team. Virginia wins the title in 06. Duke gets to the championship game in 07, eventually wins it in 2010. Seven national titles since that span. These have been not just two of the premier programs in the ACC, but nationally. Hard to believe they've never played on Memorial Day against one another. The 2010 national semifinal, though, we were talking about this earlier. Oh, yeah, great Quint, game. Quint, under the lights, night game. It's the second semifinal, under the lights. Sean McDonough and I called that game. I'll never forget it. Uh, the, the talent on the field was as good as it gets. The game had a, about as much drama. Was that an M&T Bank? I think it was. The place was jam-packed. And you think about the end of that game, it was just every possession was, was crazy. Big shot, Brian Carroll scored late for Virginia. And then Max Quinzani, the doughboy, taking uh, taking a feed from... Uh, Ned Crotty. Ned Crotty. Right-handed, by the way, Max. But think about Virginia, that team. The Bratton brothers, Brian Carroll playing midfield. Ken Clawson, Gittleman. Neil Stanwick, Bocklet on attack. Galaxy of stars that night. A lot night. of pros, a lot of pros. And the further you get from it, you appreciate how much star power was concentrated on one field. Aiden Denenza now. Denenza's kind of a transitional offensive player. He's not as much going to draw double teams, but he's a great passer. Now Balsamo, the shifty freshman, over to McAdory. Denenza, it's the Long Island Express. Denenza fires, save Nunes. Comes to O'Neill, another Long Islander. Denenza will have opportunities in each. Virginia doesn't respect him as a Dodger. There was no double team. Ledman, they need to help. Ledman working on Bauer, ran out of room. And Ledman was in the crease. Virginia ball. Nine turnovers for Duke. ESPN, the home of the women's final four tonight in Dallas, Texas, LSU, Virginia Tech at seven. Iowa, South Carolina. Boy, there's a lot of buzz surrounding that game. Dawn Staley's Gamecocks. We get to see Caitlin Clark, the Iowa superstar. Here's Cormier again. He's got the shorty, lost his man, bounce shot too high. Duke is okay with Peyton Cormier having to score goals as a Dodger. Because it takes the Cavaliers out of their offense. It's a long-term plan to get the ball away from Schellenberger, McConvey, and others. Now Xander Dixon, he's a very good passer, tiptoeing around the crease. Brower has defended Schellenberger well, using the pick game now. It's Brower picking up Connor. Let's see if they can get it to Schellenberger, who's marked by Tyler Carpenter, who was an All-American last year. This Duke defense winning these matchups on the perimeter. Cormier drew some attention inside McConvey off the pipe. That's one you need. That's one you need if you're a Wahoos fan. They can't believe it. Great look, great pass, and it hit the top crossbar. Here's Carpenter, third-team All-American, now O'Neal. Goal line extended. He is so dangerous in that wing to goal line extended area. Q Connor Schellenberger so far, zero shots. Cormier's got three, I believe, unofficially. I would get the ball to Schellenberger, but I think he might need some help in terms of picks today. Cormier has four officially by our guy, Russ Delin. I think you got to run Schellenberger off of picks, and I think you got to change 
where you attacked with him. Maybe more from the wing, and maybe even more from up top. Do something that'll make the other team uncomfortable. And Schellenberger is comfortable playing up top. He did it a lot as a freshman. Here's Owen Caputo. Bauer trying to get into his hands. Flag down, first penalty of the game. It'll be on Virginia. That wasn't in between his hands, I'll tell you that much. 25 at the end, with a hole. 30 seconds, 25 with a hole. 30 seconds. Our official there, Steve Ruppel, his son, Brian, made three spectacular saves on this field two weeks ago when Maryland knocked off then number one Virginia. Easy call, Bauer, cowboy, lives on a ranch outside of Dallas. I think he's the first Virginia player to attend ag school here. Yeah, they said he is as Texas as they come. Duke on the man up this season at 41%. Brennan O'Neill now. Over to Denenza. Feeding inside. Nice Bounce shot. Check. Not there. Great poke by Tommy McNeil, 21. O'Neill with a rocket off the ground. And it's 4 2 Duke. O'Neill has had a hand in three of the four. This is scary. We talked about the conditions and how the outside bounce shot on a natural grass surface that's got a little moisture to it. Watch him use the earth here, big time. Plants his feet, and look at that ball just skim and accelerate past the stick of Noons. That is a, a thing of beauty. This angle tells the tale. Dead center, uses the defender as a screen, and rips that one. Duke wins it off the wings. A chance to go quickly. Bounce shot. Noon saves it. Nice stop by Noon. It's almost the identical shot there. Aiden McGuire looking for a goal. These conditions, Anish, from a goaltender standpoint, you've got to move your feet on a day like today. Probably make more saves with your shoulders, your face mask, your quads. You've got to move your feet because no two hops are going to be the same. Kip Turner, Virginia's assistant coach, telling us they've been working with Noons, both on mechanics, both on psychology, as Caputo goes upstairs, and it's 5-2 Blue Devils. Q, we showed the graphic early in this game. It's not just Duke has been dominant over Virginia over a long span. A lot of these games have not been close. It, it again, defies explanation, and, and you see that this midfield group Caputo runs downhill, there's no double team, and he too can win a matchup, okay? There's not a soft spot right now on this Duke offense. I, I, I told you earlier in the week, like, watching this team on tape, they're operating on offense as good as any in the country. I don't know what changed. I think it was just the, just the parts fitting and guys emerging, Balsamo, the freshman. Uh, everyone's got their role, they're buying in. The ball movement has been electric. You take a guy like Caputo, runs on the second midfield a couple of years ago he was a 20 goal scorer and, and i think their detractors say well they haven't played anybody they haven't played anybody. they played some good teams maybe not a great teams but since that overtime win against syracuse here comes miazon i thought they looked strong last week in a game in philadelphia against a tough st joe's team it's a slip and slide. Carpenter's got it. Miazon trailing him. Carpenter in transition. Plays it to the wing. O'Neal, one more. Dyson Williams, like clockwork. From turnover to turn and rake. Virginia can't keep their feet. Carpenter with a, just a beautiful handle. Tic-tac-toe. That's why they call it execution. You can owe somebody money for that.
to uh, turnovers high in your offensive zone can prove costly. Here comes LaSala, 30 career goals. Fires on Cage, Helm turns him away. Loose ball picked up by Frizzoli. Now Duke Numbers. going the other way. Virginia milling in retreat. Naso to O'Neal. Frizzoli fires oh. wide. He had a great look. That was just a gorgeous passing play. They had the trailer break. Frizzoli behind the play. And O'Neal spraying it to his teammates. 6-2. Duke on top of Virginia. You got to survive this flurry right now if you're, if you're Virginia. You're on the ropes a bit here. You haven't seen anything like this all season. Mar Maryland didn't boss around Virginia like this. Notre Dame didn't at any point in that game last week. This just feels different. Virginia was the number one team when they lost to Maryland, regained the number one ranking after beating Notre Dame last week as Denenza misfires. The Irish had moved up to one. If Duke wins this game in dominating fashion, there's a strong case the Blue Devils have for number one next week. There comes O'Neal against Sawstead. Tough angle, missed the cage. Shot clock at 24. I think Duke's realized that Virginia's slow to go. They're slow to double team, and so the opportunity to ISO to beat your man and score while running towards the goal is, is there. Uh, we've seen him pass the ball in the last couple weeks. Today it's more of a an ISO set. Denenzo rolls and sneaks it by Nunes. It is 7-2 Blue Devils and four unanswered in this second quarter. Classic inside roll. Denenza posts up the 6'3 junior. Talked about him as a passer, but he realizes double teams are gonna be slow. He's got all sorts of space there on the corner. Drives up to the five by five and gets it done. Four goals in less than four minutes for Duke. You think a timeout here if you're Virginia. This thing's getting off the rails. They, they need the next goal big. Lasala plays it back. Now Petey gets it. We'll hear from Petey at halftime in this week's relaxing with Peacock. Dixon snakes around. Virginia's offense is at its best when things go through Connor Schellenberger. He has not touched the ball a whole lot tonight. Here comes Connor being chased by Jake Caputo. Jake and Owen, both sons of Duke assistant coach Ronnie Caputo. Peter Garno with a rocket. Garno gives you a little juice from the outside. He's he got does. the ability to beat his man, and if he can hit the cage, it's a dangerous weapon. Cormier now against the short stick. Now picked up by Carpenter on the switch. Cormier still carries, fires, and scores his second unassisted goal. It's 7-3. This is the cat and mouse of this game. Duke gives Cormier the short stick matchup and the big man rolls to pay dirt. Gets to dead center and makes him pay his second of the game and a much needed goal for the Wahoos. Best part about it, Nugget, there's seven more. The Popeye's Big Box. Choose two pieces of our signature bone-in chicken or our eight-piece white meat nuggets. Pick two regular sides and a biscuit flakier than Auntie Denise for just $6.99. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Schellenberger has not been a factor today. He leads the nation assists 
He's top six in points. And when the ball moves through number one for Virginia, it, it's a different offense. Uh, you have Cormier, 24, and Blue draws a lot of attention. But Xander Dixon is probably the smartest cutter in lacrosse. Off ball, the way he can read space, he can read defensive movement. He can avail himself and then finish from close range. Those two had it going last week. It was a master clinic. Increase play offensively. Schellenberger with his eyes up. Dixon filling seams, finding voids, finding soft spots and finishing. As I said, they scored five goals from the crease. If you can add one there, if you count a rebound goal, six goals from the inside as they dissected that Notre Dame defense. Today, it's been a different story. Because Duke doesn't double team as much and they put the short stick on Cormier. It's taken Virginia out of their typical offense. And Kenny Brower has a lot to do with that. He has defended Schellenberger well in his career. There was a viral moment a few years ago. Remember when Schellenberger oh, yeah. oh, broke yeah. his ankles? Was unfortunate. And what was lost in that game was how well Brower played. And what has been lost is how well Brower has played in his career against Schellenberger. Here comes Cormier down the alley. Warriors! Trick for Big Peyton. He's got six hat tricks in seven games. 26 career hat tricks now in 47 games. Uh, you can feel this goal. You can feel the impact of this goal. Zinn gets away with one there, but Stevenson puts himself in the land of giants. And look at Zinn. The road runner, eyes are up, a gorgeous headman pass to Cormier. He's given too much real estate, and this place comes to its feet. Virginia loves to run. They need a more helter-skelter game here. They need less six-on-six six and more end-to-end. -end. And that can start at the face-off X. Cormier, 50 goals a season ago. He is a walking hat trick for his career. Now Petey LaSala. Wins the faceoff, Tornado's out of trouble, and dumps it back to Saladay. Tommy McNeil, the pole is out there, wow. along with LaSala. Meso just bailed in the middle of that play. And now Duke with an opportunity. Here comes Jake Caputo. Nobody picks him up. Feeding inside, slam, dunk, Dyson Williams. Now we can run two. This, this is misplayed by Virginia's defense. It's, a two, it's a, just a blatant two-on-one, but you got to know your personnel. Here's the turnover. We've seen this happen all day in wet conditions. But the two-on-one is misplayed. Why? Well, who do you want to shoot here? Caputo or Dyson Williams? And, your point, and that defender has a choice. And so as the goalie there, I'm yelling at him, back off, back off, back off, stay on 51. We'll give six his shot, because there's no way Dyson Williams is missing from close range. No. Second goal so for Dyson Williams. So when you talk about smart defenders who can read situations, those are some nuances and some subtleties. Yeah, LaSala had that for a moment. Naso knocked it away after LaSala slipped. There's O'Neal. Tempo's picked up here, hasn't it? We thought this game would be high scoring, and then we look, I kind of looked at tape and said, no, maybe it wouldn't be, but it kind of feels like it will be now. Duke has put up eight with Six plus to go in the first half. Tommy Schelling, the Lehigh transfer. One of the top 10 scorers in Mountain Hawks history. He's running on the second midfield for Duke. Been a dangerous inverter behind the net against a shorty lately as a lefty. Played for a former Duke great at Lehigh, Kevin Cassis. Here comes Mitchell. Now McAdory. Denied by Nunes. Nice one by Nunes, he shut it down. Good angle play, read the head of the stick, stayed tall. If in doubt, stay big. Schellenberger matched with Brewer, Brower. We haven't seen much of Schutz. Griffin Schutz, yeah, has not seen the field a whole, whole lot. He was 0 for 5 against Notre Dame. Now he's got it in the restraining area. He can be a difference maker today because of his size. Yeah, he had that knocked away by Wilson Stevenson, who leads the team and caused turnovers. Virginia retrieves. He's got a match up here. He's got the short stick, Aiden McGuire, a freshman. Shuts the top player coming out of high school a year ago. 
Feeds the middle, Xander Dixon, top shelf. Little penthouse palm for the Slim Reaper, it's 8-5. How about those wrists? For as much as we want to talk about Connor Schellenberger being the quarterback of this Virginia team, the guys who may decide this game are guys like Griffin Schutz, Jeff Connor, and Thomas McConvey. Look at Dixon. Again, finding the pocket, the bubble, the soft spot, and then the wrister. It's a young man whose dad was a, a college tennis player, his brother and family, a, a family of tennis players. You can see that in his hand-eye coordination and his wrists, the snap he gets. He came into the game averaging four goals per game. Now Lasala fighting his way through a double team. Pretzels away from trouble, and Virginia calls a timeout to salvage the possession. For a 3-1 run right now by the Cavs. This game's not over. After trailing 7-4. Far from over. What Virginia has had over the years with Petey LaSala, and, and really, if you go back to that 2019 national semifinal against Duke, LaSala was the guy. He won every faceoff down the stretch. Look at him. So tough. Dealing with a turf toe early in the year. Didn't scrimmage at all in January or February. You get this young man out of his shell, and he is really funny. Going head to head with Jake Naso. Naso, 65%. Some people think that he's like a mid-season All-American, if there was ever such a thing, because there's not. You didn't submit your ballot. I didn't submit mine either. I no, don't believe I, in the mid-season All-American. I don't believe in preseason stuff, let alone mid-season. Petey LaSala has scored 30 goals in his career for context. 33, excuse me, 33. That's more than Trevor Baptiste. It's more than T.D. Erlin. It's more than Will Garral. Some of the and they use him like prominent they, they, faceoff men of, of recent yeah, times. Lars uses him like he did use Will Garral, who was his fogo uh, for Brown. Petey will stay on. He'll carry the ball behind the net, do some action back there. He'll also really dangerous in the pick game, where at top of the box he'll set some picks and roll off. He'll he'll make you uncomfortable because you're face-off, get-off guy. He's got to stay on and actually play lacrosse. It's Petey's lacrosse player. Lasala in his career has taken more than 1,500 face-offs, and oftentimes you worry about mileage with face-offs. It's a lot like I mean, a running back, and he plays hurt, he's banged up, and when game time rolls around, you don't see it. Jake Naso for Duke, again, he's taken 1,000-plus face-offs as well. I, I think you hold your breath. I, I think every coach of a, a leading D1 program holds their breath. Uh, can you get by uh, with one face-off, man? Uh, we saw Cornell play last week. They, they've got three viable guys, and to me, that's an advantage, A, stylistically, but B, wear and tear. Because if Luke Wehrman of Maryland gets hurt, the Terps are up a river without a paddle. Yeah, the same goes for Virginia. They'd have to turn to a freshman, Mac Eldridge, don't if have something viable, happened to Lasella. Don't have a viable backup. Here is Patrick McIntosh. He had six goals earlier this year in a win against Johns Hopkins. Now Dixon, who's got two tonight. McConvey able to cradle that. Dixon's versatile enough that he can run the show from behind the net. Came to Virginia as an ex-attackman. Cormier shot, saved. And, and that in itself right there is the crux of the strategy going on in this game. You put the shorty on Cormier. Yeah, I know he's got three goals already, but it's taking Virginia out of their base offense. And that's a win if you're Ron Caputo and John Donowski. Duke fires on the empty net. Whose ball? It's Virginia ball. Closest was Quentin Matsui. Duke calls that the bazooka play. They've got a couple of guys who they trust in the bazooka game. You're going to 10-man ride? We'll fire on an empty net. That time, Virginia got away. Matsui just continued to improve throughout his career as a young man from Minnesota. Represented the U.S. last summer in the U-20s in Ireland. Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Jeff Connor feeding inside, shot, score. 
Peyton Cormier with four in the opening half. That was the first yes. one where he scored off ball. That's Virginia. That's Cormier being one of the best in the business on the crease as a finisher, using his big body to deal with defensive pressure and finding corners. Connor draws three white jerseys and picks up the assist as Cormier pegs the water bottle. Two assists for Connor. Connor Schellenberger still without a point. They can win. Virginia can win without Schellenberger getting five or six points if guys like Jeff Connor, Griffin Schutz can be of major impact. Now right now, Virginia winning the battle at the faceoff X, getting the extra possessions. That time they turn it over. Might have a chance to get it back, and they do. And that will draw a flag. Noah Chismar, the sophomore, got decked. Chismar comes away with the ground ball. Still on the turf. Now Duke picks it. And Virginia and this man up offense clicking at 61%. Third in Division I will go to work for the first time. Point 19, push 30 seconds. 19. Chismar, a scrapper, a high school attackman, initially recruited by Marquette. He applied to Virginia, got in on his own. Okay, this is a young man who's pretty darn talented in the classroom. Contacted Coach Tiffany, said, I want to try out for the lacrosse team. Coach Tiffany said, yeah, come on, come on out. Next thing you know, they changed his position, and he's a regular in the lineup last year as a freshman, and now he's a sophomore. Mom played lacrosse at Johns Hopkins. Dad played at UMBC. Dad also a best-selling author, horror genre, Richard Chismar. Did you reach chasing the boogeyman? Pretty good. Connor Schoenberger's first shot saved by Helm. The Chismars in charge of setting up the Virginia tailgate today. I hope they have a tent to keep the food uh, dry. Here's O'Neal, wheels it behind a Macadori. Because I plan on swinging by on my way out of here later. Grab a bratwurst <laughs> for the road. <laughs> Absolutely. Duke needed that stop, and they need a possession here with two, two, two and change to go before halftime. Duke's played too well to be up by only two. I was just about to say it. Petey LaSala winning faceoffs gave Virginia some downhill momentum. Now Duke will try to take its time, be patient offensively. Little zone defense from Virginia. First time we've seen it. A guy like Ledman could be dangerous here. Shot clock at 20, Ledman plays it up top to Denenza. Feeds the middle, William shot turned away by Nunes. And Matsui able to win the race to the sideline. Virginia ball, and the Cavaliers, who were down 7-2 at one point, have a chance to get back to within one here with a minute 20 to go. Uh, that was his best save of the day. These fans appreciative of the work. Matt Nunes had a Texas. You talked about a little bit of a sophomore slump, but I mean, I was so impressed with him last week, bouncing back on the road at Notre Dame. Giant crowd, momentum with Notre Dame. He stood tall. He's a, a great athlete. Out of the goal, he's one of the best goalies I've seen in the last decade in terms of ground balls, passing, getting involved in the ride. And the way Virginia plays, that component almost as important as stopping shots. And he can draw confidence from that. Connor eyes up the short stick. It's the freshman, McGuire. Final 40 seconds of this opening half. Number one, Virginia trailing number four, Duke, 8-6. Blue Devils have won seven in a row. They've won 16 straight regular season games against Virginia. About a six second differential between game clock and shot clock. Connor snakes around the crease. His pass picked off by Stevenson. Over to Frizzuli, it's on the ground. Stevenson gets it back. He slips. Virginia the double. Stevenson gets rid of it. Players sliding all over. McConvey's got it. He'll heave it toward the cage, intercepted. And the first half ends with Duke taking a two-goal lead to the locker room. One of the things we saw, Duke dared Peyton Cormier. Cormier scored four goals. The Blue Devils 
elite defense against one of the nation's top players in Connor Schellenberger. And brain trust for Virginia talking things over before they pop into the locker room. I, I think Petey LaSala facing off kind of keyed that comeback for the Cavs. And Sean Kerwin, their offensive coordinator, did come up with some wrinkles that looked really good in the last, let's say, eight minutes of that second quarter. We're slipping, we're sliding. Battleship gray skies, the rain coming down at Klockner. It's Duke with a two goal lead on the number one. Blue Devils led seven to two before Virginia made a bit of a late run in that second quarter. And the Q conditions have been a big part of this. A lot of players slipping, sliding, the wind is blowing. My phone says it's 64 degrees yeah, out. That's wrong. Uh, it <laughs> honestly feels like it's 40. The wind is sideways here through the booth and we're getting hit in the face with it. I can't imagine what it's like down on the field. And so that makes communication amongst players yep. uh, difficult. It also makes uh, footing. I mean, it, nothing has come easy on the field and you can't assume that possession is, is gonna be yours because things can change quickly. You look at the footing. This can be a slick field when it's not wet. With the rain, it's added an extra element and the rain really hasn't stopped. The unpredictable nature of it, you know, next thing you know, your teammate falls and drops the ball or a defender loses his footing and, and gets toasted. Uh, it, it adds an element of unpredictability that's, that's difficult to manage. Duke again has won 16 straight regular season games against Virginia. Starting 2005, Duke is 21 and two against Virginia. Peyton Cormier had four goals in the first half for UVA and uh, let's be real, that's part of the Duke game plan. Yeah, the trade-off is that Connor Schellenberger has been taken out of the equation. He's got one shot and really hasn't been a factor. And so Virginia has chosen to run the offense a little more through Cormier, but I did like what I saw late stages of that second quarter. Jeff Connor picked up an assist, Griffin shuts. They have options, uh, and Sean Kerwin's just got to figure out how he best wants to attack. I I'd like to see some more, some more picks for Schellenberger. You run him off a picket and get a switch in a matchup, or run him at the top of the box where Kenny Brower, who's a great defender, is going to be a little uncomfortable. Schellenberger for his career averages more than four and a half points per game, but in his career against Duke, two games, he's at 1.5. Petey LaSalle won 10 out of 16 at the faceoff X. Jake Naso, second in the country in faceoff win percentage, gets this one to begin the third quarter. Dyson Williams had a couple of goals for Duke in that opening half, 51 in white. Renan O'Neill, four points, two goals, two helpers. Uh, to, to one of Duke's strengths this year is that they're not reliant on O'Neill or any other individual. This is, they all eat. This is buffet-style family, family offense. Ball hits the turf. Here comes Cole Kastner swinging against McAdory. O'Neal from up top, plenty of time. Caputo's got the short stick. Now picked up by Chismore on the switch. O'Neal had the shorty for a moment. Now Sawstead meets him, 20 to shoot. McAdory going to work on Kastner. Denenza dancing around X. He slips. Gives Saladay time to recover. O'Neal charging down the alley. Ran out of real estate. Denenza's shot. That's a save. It'll be Virginia ball. Nice piece by Nunes who gets this party started in the second half with a beautiful body save. You know, it's interesting on the traction, Anisha. It looks like Denenz is skating, yet Brennan O'Neill, 34 in white, seems like he's got perfectly good traction. Here comes Thomas McConvey. He's been quiet Too today. Quiet. Too quiet McConvey's been, the Ver Vermont grad transfer. There's a U view of the save, right-hander Noons. Square to the shooter, maintains his balance and gets good explosion towards the ball. Look at that step he takes. Th that is fundamentals, goaltending one-on-one. Tyler Carpenter marking shots. Now McConvey against Stevenson. 
Jeff Connor isolates the short stick, yeah. Jake Caputo. Teams reveal themselves in the third quarter. Connor had a couple of helpers in that opening half. So UVA deciding that a single invert with, with Connor is where they want to go here. Connor probing, dumps it off to Cormier. Four first half goals. Cormier gives it back. Shot by McConvey, saved by Helm. He's in double digits with saves. That's his 10th. Gorgeous flip pass by Cormier and McConvey, two Canadians on that two-man game. Carpenter's a threat in transition. Williams now over to O'Neill. Virginia able to get back, and Duke has to sub. 55 and white is Grant Mitchell, who runs on, missed five games with an injury, came back over the weekend against St. Joe's. Mitchell, Schelling, and Balsamo, the midfielders. Here's Schelling, the Lehigh transfer, save Nunes. Now O'Neill. A new 60 for Duke. McAdory toward the cage, trying to machete through the defense. Can't. Well, That's nice. trying to move through Jurassic Park. Yeah, nice help there defensively. 11 turnovers by Duke. Evan Zinn feeding inside. A shot to score. And a hat trick by Xander Dixon to bring Virginia within one. The evolution of Evan Zinn carrying in early in his career here. He would have split this and taken it down the alley and taken a maybe shot. This time, because of his blazing speed, he draws the eyes of the defense and suckers them to number zero and then dishes it down low for the easy assist. That's a terrific, terrific transitional play for Evan Zinn. Super smart. It's a guy who graduated Johns Hopkins in three years. Three years. It took you, what, four? Here comes Petey. Schellenberger, and the skip pass results in a turnover. I, I did get out in four. I had to Did you graduate in four? To, yes, you, I did. You, no, yes, okay. I did. You did. I had to accelerate. Uh, my senior year, I took a, like a year and a half's worth of credits. Now, Quint, the more I dig deep on you, the stories from your days at Johns Hopkins <laughs> are legendary, man. <laughs> uh, they'll be in the book. You got to get Seth Tierney on your podcast. <laughs> no, I, I, we, we can't talk about anything. There's nothing that we can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> he played the greatest prank of all time. Which uh, had, was? Had, uh, a turkey giveaway in the cafeteria that he put. He said, you can go up to uh, the athletic center and make a left in the office. And send him to Coach Zimmerman's office to pick up their turkeys <laughs> with multiple winners. <laughs> So all day long, these kids are going to the coach's <laughs> office. I'm here to collect the free turkey. Oh, Brennan O'Neill. That's a hat trick. And it's 9-7 Duke, a five-point evening at Klockner for O'Neill. He's no turkey. He'll be a future pro. Uh, again, playing for Team USA. Nice change of fields, head pump and go. O'Neill's always setting things up whether it's a hitch and go, a stutter step and go, changing speeds, changing directions, throwing deception at defenders with his body, with his feet, with his eyes, with his hands, with his stick head. Lasalla wins the draw, charging toward the cage and now retreats out to the wing. How about O'Neal now? Five points in nine of Duke's 11 games. He's been super consistent this season hasn't forced the action, so to speak, and still has gaudy numbers. Virginia using the sub game. Here's McIntosh. And a good look there by Cormier sailing high. That's a powerful rip from 10 yards. Oakville Ox, big man, 230 pounds. Missed a couple weeks with a lower body injury. Ricky Miazon with Peter Garno on the midfield along with McIntosh. McIntosh 
Feeding inside, shot, score. That's five for Peyton Cormier. Slowly but surely, Virginia's crawled their way back into this game. Duke led seven to two, early second corner. Excellent double team work there. McIntosh, the lefty from Palo Alto, California. This is a program guy who's worked his way up the depth charts. He's willed his way. Started, as I said, Cormier was out for two or three games earlier in the year. McIntosh came on and it was seamless. He offers this team a lot, McIntosh, dodging left-handed shooting. What's been impressive about this Virginia run cue, you look at their first four goals, three of them unassisted, that's un-Virginia-like. The last four all have been assisted. We're seeing Cormier off ball, and they've done that really without Connor Schellenberger being involved. Virginia had to get it across before that shot clock hit 60. It results in a turnover. Duke the other way. Jack Gray. The D midi over to O'Neal. Fires low. Four for Brennan O'Neal. Stand up, Strong Island. Turnovers come back to haunt you. Just a bad turnover. Gray does a good job, draws the defense, and then kicks it to the money man. O'Neal, give me the ball from the wing. I mean, this is where he really asserts himself. Defensively, you're in DEFCON 5 when he's barreling in, staring down your goalie there. Nothing you can do about it. Now you can pray. You hope to get hit by it. O'Neal, humble, likable, coachable. 12-7, Virginia on faceoffs. And we get a hold against Virginia. Duke ball. Naso off the quick restart. Numbers for a moment. Oh. Naso fires high. Naso is a threat. He's got four goals this season. 13 goals for his career. I don't mind that shot at all. No. Especially with the backup. You get a free opportunity to ping a corner. Now Ledman. Ledman's got a match up here. The short stick Connor trying to stay with Ledman. Ledman loses him. Goes high! Top shelf against Noons. It's three for Garrett Ledman. And Duke's lead is three. Paul Carcaterra's PLL big board. It's going to have a lot of defenders in the top 10, but let me tell you, Garrett Ledman is going to get selected in the first round of the PLL draft this summer. We were down on the field pregame. He looks like a pro. Spent a lot of time in the weight room. He moves like a pro. And let me tell you, in the last five games, he is shooting like a pro. Garrett Ledman is playing like the boss. Including tonight, 14 goals in his last six games. He's become that stretch shooter. Go! 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 A steady rain continues to pepper the field here at Klockner. Balsamo. Now Mitchell. Down the alley against Zinn, working it back to X. O'Neal from distance. Mm. Face dot, mm. fires, scores! Talked about it a couple minutes ago. Talked about his ability constantly using deception. Whoop. Big face dodge. Leaner of a shot. I mean, the defender jumps out of the way. The finish, putting it all together on a Friday night in Charlottesville. Brendan O'Neill, one of the best in the game. 
This is Brennan O'Neill's third career game against Virginia. He's got 20 points. Days like today, performances like today, moments like right now, he is making his way to the Tawaratan Banquet as a front runner for that award. Five goals, eight shots, the diversified offensive package, whether it's a face dodge, a hitch and go, a sidearm shot, an overhand shot. I mean, I, I can't recall seeing an offensive, the volume of inventory that he brings to the table offensively. I, I think we're seeing why he was selected for Team USA uh, senior division with, with pro players. Virginia had closed to 9-8. Duke has responded with three straight. Two of those by O'Neal. Ledman had the other. O'Neal's got three in all in this third quarter. O'Neal's only a junior. To think that he would get out of Duke without winning a national championship, but that would tarnish his legacy. And I, and I it, wouldn't go as far I, to I say tarnish. Tar maybe tarnish is not, not the word. It would, it would be incomplete, I think would be the right word. The great players, Jordan Wolf, defined by winning championships. Here's Xander Dixon. And that's Jeff Connor as the initiator. Again, three assists by Connor. That seems to be the game plan. No Schellenberger, he's not effective. Let's go with Connor, who's done a nice job. Connor against the midfield defender draws the eyes of two Duke defenders, 19 and 20 and wide inside. You see it, look at the ball watching going on. And Dixon, sometimes you'll see him cut to the ball, other times you see him float. His head's on a swivel offensively and that sense, he's got his antennas out, finding the soft spot. If you're a young player there, space is your friend on offense. Put yourself in the middle, put defenders in conflict, catch it, know where the goal is, and get it out of your stick quick. Early in Xander Dixon's career, the scouting report on him was he would shoot low. He had a goal going high earlier. Chance there for Cormier. It bangs off the crossbar. And the last time out, Dixon went low. And this will come back. Empty net. Virginia in its 10-man ride. Oh, I thought Helm was going to stare this one down. Brower and Stevenson, they trust as the bazookas against the ride, and that time it's Kastner and Zinn causing the turnover. Virginia pushing. Dixon dumps it off to Zinn. Duke able to get back. Nice decisions there. Great ride by Virginia. I really thought Helm had a, sh a chance to shoot on the open net from dead center at 60 yards. Ledman tried to take it through the double team. He got pinched. As a former goalie, I saw your eyes lighting up. Well, I, we've seen a lot of 10-man rides this year, Anise. We're seeing a lot of end-to-end long-range long goals. Dixon tiptoes the crease up top to Connor. Flag down, now two down. And a penalty coming against Duke. You, you can't 10-man without ball pressure. Schellenberger, Dixon, great oh. look. Missed upstairs, and Virginia will have the extra man. Interesting here in terms of uh, how many minutes and if non-releasable. Point 29, illegal body check hey, hey. to the head. One hey, minute. Connor. the turnover that led it. Ledman tries to speed his way through. Zinn gets him with the ice pick and Virginia's off to the races. And it's a one minute penalty on Brower. The hit to the head, there are three varying degrees, indirect contact, direct and flagrant. Indirect gets you a minute non-releasable. Virginia 0 for 1 with the extra man, 60% entering today and they're able to cash in. It's McConvey and it's Schellenberger with the assist. We spent a lot of time on the field before the game with Duke assistant Ron Caputo, and he was telling us how much conflict Virginia's man-up offense creates. We saw it there. He, he told us they were gonna bring some perimeter pressure. They kinda do, but the stick work 
in the pass by Schellenberger. He's in the scoring sheet, and McConvey finishes from close range. Ultra consistent. Thomas McConvey's got a degree from Vermont. Led that team to some league championships and NCAA appearances. They've done a great job with Chris Fifes. And now he gets to finish out his career and get an extra degree here in Charlottesville. And he reunites with his childhood friend, Peyton Cormier. Face off one by Virginia. The penalty continues as a non releasable. Look for Duke to press out here potentially with the man down. I, I don't think they can afford to play it vanilla and base. Now Virginia still has about 25 seconds. They scored quickly with the extra man. Schellenberger to Garno, and it's 12-11. Connor Schellenberger has entered the chat. Two assists on the extra man, Peter Garno. And just when it looked like Duke maybe was on the verge of pulling away, back comes Virginia. And when you look at this season now with these rule changes, with the high hits, carrying that one two minute, as you said, Anish, the significance of a non-releasable penalty with a good FOGO is make it, take it, lacrosse. Back-to-back -back extra man goals. And again, still 17 seconds left, so Virginia faces off three versus two. The crowd energized, the Virginia bench jumping. Two goals in 29 seconds with the man up, the non-releasable against Brower. Big face off here, Carpenter comes up with it for Duke. And the Blue Devils can catch their breath. That's a giant ground ball by Tyler Carpenter. Giant play. Tyler Carpenter, an All-American a season ago. One of their captains. And one thing John Danowski mentioned earlier in the year when I covered him again in their Denver game, and he mentioned again this week when we talked to him, the leadership of this team. The we captains. remarked to him. You just watch the team on the field. The chemistry is different this year, and John Danowski readily admitted that. It has not been a talent issue the last couple of years for Duke. Virginia. But the pieces fit well this year. Zone defense for Virginia. There's Owen Caputo. Duke attacking it in a circle. Uh, no one on the inside. Ledman from the outside, bombs away, shot blocked. It didn't hit the goalie, shot clock still going. Denenza slips, saves the possession. McAdory plays it back to Dyson Williams. Shot clock at 10, Williams feeds in front, Denenza cashes in. Aiden Denenza with just his second multi-goal game of his career. And Duke gets a little bit of breathing room back. You talk about high IQ offensive players who bounce in and out of, of man and zone offense. And off the scramble, Denenza just flows. They double cut Ledman towards the near pipe. Denenza cuts the far post. And Virginia's just caught off guard because Duke went from a circle to a cutting formation with guys on the inside. What did they serve in the locker room at halftime? Espresso? Ten goals in this third quarter. Lasala wins the faceoff, accelerates ahead, draws traffic, shoots. Oh, Helm wow. had to save Cormier on the rebound. It hit the pipe. And the back up to Virginia, 3.39 to go in the third. Schellenberger had two assists, both on extra man goals for Virginia. Cormier's got five today against Gray. Cormier looking for McConville, who never saw it. Turnover, and uh, we've seen that a few times today. Duke forcing Cormier to be a Dodger. There's the replay shot. Oh, He's whew. gonna want that back. A wide open look. Here's Frizzoli, the long pole, jarred away. Chismar being chased, he hits the turf. And that's going to be a loose ball push on Duke. Chismar is a scrapper and a grinder. Smart play there. You feel pressure. You're making things happen because you get into the ball first. But you feel pressure on your back. Don't fight it. Oh, 
Still more than two and a half to go in the third. John Donowski as Duke's head coach, eight and O oh, all time at Klockner. Just getting started here, just getting started. Round one of what could be a multiple round fight this year. Griffin shuts now, inverts. He's got the short stick matchup. Shuts, question mark. And Schellenberger has the backup. Kind of settled, kind of rushed it. Take him up higher. Take him up to the five by five. That's five yards north of the goal line, extended five yards off the middle of the goal. To the island, take him up to the island. Shots back to Schellenberger. Turns the corner, feeding to Dixon behind the back. Not there, somebody lost a stick. Looked like Frizzoli. Gray's got it for Duke. Might have taken one up upstairs. Now Helm will set up the clear. 10 man empty net. Frizzoli into the empty net. Nunes could not get back in time. Will Frizzoli lost his stick on one end of the field and scores on the other. Fourth goal of it his career. It starts with a yard sale and then Gray with a, a gorgeous pass. It, it reminded me of hitting a relay, hitting the relay in baseball where the outfielder's hitting the infielder and then you make the play at the plate and that's exactly what that play looked like. Frizzoli gets the credit. Gray picks up the assist, skimming that ball on the wet carpet. Off the faceoff, it's Carpenter. He's been playing well off the wings. Yeah, I, I talked to Lars Tiffany, Virginia's coach, about the 10 man specifically, because so often we are seeing teams get burned now by long distance goals, empty net goals, and it, it makes you wonder, evaluate. Is it really worth it to 10 man? Are you getting enough turnovers to offset giving up an empty net goal? Is it? I, you gotta ask the mathematicians of the world. To our friends at lacrosse reference, some homework for the next week. Zone defense from Virginia again. Aiden Denenza. So one thing, Virginia's not deep at the midfield defensive position. It's been Zinn, Saladay, and Chismar, Little Connor. This allows them to play defense without using so much energy. From the wing, Ledman cranked and fired, and it's Tyson Williams there to retrieve. Ledman's got three, O'Neill's got five. Duke has not trailed in this game. Shot clock winding down, down to four. And Williams beats the shot clock. A hat trick for Dyson Williams. Came in averaging three plus goals per game. And again, every time Virginia's able to make it a one or two goal game, Duke our answers. You tell me, is this pass meant for Williams or is he skipping it through to Caputo on the far side? I'm not sure. You had two players in a line. Great handle by Dyson. Captain, senior from the Hill Academy up in Ontario. He's not two-handed. It don't matter, folks. He's got a left that's worth its weight in gold. This is a young man who's going to be playing pro lacrosse indoor and outdoor, Dyson Williams. Final second is quarter number three. Lasala, he's got to go quickly. Five seconds. Petey fires on cage. That would hit the side pipe. And time expires. Well, we go to the fourth quarter in Charlottesville. Duke 15 minutes away from making it 17 straight in the regular season against Virginia. Brennan O'Neill, unstoppable so far. Five goals, three assists. Will Duke vex Virginia again, or do the Hoos have a comeback? Spicy chicken fries, chicken fries with heat. Appetizer mini meal, a spicy treat. Eat them anytime, cause you're royalty. The box fits a sauce that's pretty neat. BK, have it your way.
and Ishraf Quinn Kesnick. It's the ACC on ESPN. Friday night at Klockner. Great crowd. The you band this is band playing. Band ace, this band is We've got legit. rain. These We've guys got are elements. great. Look at the brass section. In the rain on a Friday. I know you have to go home. I, is it better than the Hopkins band? Oh, the, 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 this gets me pumped. I mean, I, the, these guys, how can you not be ready to play in a big game like this when the band's bringing it? Nice dodge there by the goalie. 15 to 11. Now, Hopkins plays uh, on our air tomorrow kidding, against Rutgers, Hopkins right? Hopkins has a great band. Virginia's I could be at that game. I thought about going and actually bringing a drum and joining with the band to help oh, them out. Oh, I'd love to see that. We'll see what the family schedule allows. Big weekend, big weekend. Uh, Maryland, Michigan. We got Hopkins, Rutgers. We got Ohio State, Penn State. And we have Duke with a four goal lead on Virginia. And we said it at the top of the broadcast, these two programs have been two of the best in the last 20 years. In fact, no other two programs have as many championships as Virginia and Duke, four and three respectively. Yet, it has been such a one-sided affair. Duke, 16 straight regular season wins, 21 and two overall against UVA since the start of 2005. And Virginia trying to get something off the Petey LaSala faceoff win. Instead, a turnover. Talking to John Donowski, it there's nothing, it's not like advanced algorithms here about this series. This is like fundamental lacrosse. He said, Virginia's simple. They don't vary very much. They come at you. A chance here, O'Neal back behind to Williams. And where Duke has had success on offense historically against Virginia is by drawing double teams and spinning the ball, capitalizing on the Wahoos recoveries which typically don't get tested against lesser competition. But it's not like Virginia has lacked talent in these last 20 years. They've had some of the best players we've seen. No, what I'm maybe trying to say, Virginia is used to bossing people around, sure. pushing them around athletically with guys like Kastner and Sawstead and Monsters. Chris LaPierre from years ago, the shocker. Duke's a team that they can't push around the same way. Brennan O'Neill, five goals, three assists. Owen Caputo with 10 to shoot. Backing down Saladay. Now here comes O'Neill. Shoots and scores. He makes it look so easy. A nine point evening for the junior. You know, last Sunday we covered C.J. Kirst of Cornell with a seven goal game on 10 shots, and I thought it was the model of efficiency. Same deal here. Like, Brennan O'Neill in no way is hogging or dominating ball possession time in this game. Caputo leans in. This is a set play all the way. He's gonna throw that ball to O'Neill, who's catching the ball while running up towards the goal line extended. I think that shot at a severe sliver of an angle caught both the defender and goaltender. I think they expected O'Neal to carry up to the five by five. Instead, he let it go right at goal line extended. Uh, you're thinking, there's no way he shoots from there. Yeah, he, because he's passing up a better shot, because we know he can get a better shot. Coach Dino looks cold. He looks like he needs a, a dry scarf. It'll belong to Duke. It's their first, uh, not their first road trip for Duke this year, but their first bus trip. Now, the astounding part of this dynamic, it's not just Duke's dominance, but it's how they've done it. In the Duke wins, and again, 21-2 and two against Virginia since 05, in the wins, average margin of victory has been five plus. Now, this game has been a game of runs. Virginia, though, has never led. It's been Duke all the way. Here comes Mitchell, popped out. Bodies flying. A stick hit the ground, and out of the melee, it's Chismar. Oh, nice, nice play, both by Zinn to create the turnover and Chismar to clean it up. Really well done. Evan Zinn's played a big game today. Zinn's the trailer over to Cormier, who's got five goals. Stevenson now trying to get into the body of Cormier, who draws the pole. Griffin shuts. He had that big game against Johns Hopkins. He's been 
fairly quiet since. And now they've got the Colossus line out there. Shuts, McConvey, and Miazon. Miazon's got the short stick. Caputo trying to hold his ground. Here comes Big Ricky. He's got a goal in back-to-back -back games. Schellenberger just two assists without a goal. He didn't score last time against Duke. Kenny Brower had a lot to do with it then as well. Feeding the crease, good pass. It's on the turf. Frizzoli scoops. Oh, hit the official, I believe. Considered part of the field of play. O'Neal hangs onto the ball. Feeding inside. Big save by Nunes. And the handle by O'Neal is just magical. He and Dyson, a certain connection. Almost Lyle Thompson esque with the one handed cradle. And Nunes, a, a critical save down five. Still plenty of time for Virginia. They got to get something going offensively. When you have a PD LaSala and you can play, make it, take it, you're not out of it. Duke's defensive midfield has done a, a great job in this game. That's the most improved unit on this Blue Devil team. And it's been some names that maybe weren't on people's radar at the start of the season. Jack Gray and Aiden McGuire. Schellenberger snakes around Brower. Feeds up top. Hard shot by Connor. Helm is there. And now the ball is kicked back. Schellenberger had it, twisting around. Dixon's oh, there. Nice hustle. New 60. Big time hustle. Connor wanted that shot back. Well timed double. Frizzoli picks it up. That's a stinger. That turnover is a stinger because you work so hard to get a second chance at it. 14 turnovers for Virginia. The rain has not let up. It's been steady from the opening faceoff. Too much time left in this game, over 10 minutes for Duke to take their foot off the pedal. One thing we've learned in shot clock era lacrosse, you got to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing. O'Neal from the wing, feeding Caputo. His pass Ooh, picked off. Watch this speed. Evans in. He's got the burners. Photon fast. And looking for Schellenberger. It's a turnover. So those are two golden opportunities missed by Virginia. And you got the ball back on the last possession. Turned it over. Now you've got an unsettled shot. You turn it over. Ledman pumps. Body save Noons. 12 saves for Matthew Nunes. Nice handle here by the defenders. Sawstead over to Schellenberger. Connor out of Dixon. And it's Saladay. Nobody picked him up. He took the extra step to increase his angle. And he finds the back of the net. Grayson Saladay, first goal of the season, the sixth of his career. Banging on the drums in the rain. And the water sprays up into the air as it does when you hit net on a, on a wet night. The skill level in this game is insane. The passing just in this last play, back and forth between Connor and Dixon, Dixon and Connor. One more to Saladay. I mean, everything is right on the ear. Just beautiful passing. And that was a D midi. But Virginia saw they had McAdory trapped on defense. They just keep playing. Zinn considers himself a lacrosse player. He'll play some D, he'll play some O. Same with Soliday. And there's Carpenter off the wings again for Duke. Carpenter's had a nice game with some clutch grounders. McAdory has been pretty quiet today, as has Balsamo. Zero and white, Charlie Balsamo, the freshman from Manhasset, How Chaminade well. High School. Virginia's got to go man-to-man -man defense down four with eight, eight and change to go in this game. I don't think they can afford to sit back and play zone at this stage. And now Matt Donowski slowing things down. Mitchell weaves down the alley, plays it back to O'Neal. 
Schelling, the Lehigh transfer. O'Neill with his eyes up. Wing dodge, McAdory. He's got the short stick. Feeding Dyson Williams, Nunes read it and comes up with the save. Saladay being pursued from behind. Well-timed trail check. It'll draw a flag. They're going to get Schelling. This is big. This is Virginia big. Virginia with a free possession. The Virginia save. got back into this game in the third quarter for a moment on a one-minute non-releasable penalty. Noons made that save look routine because he turned on the feed and beat the ball. His turn was faster than the feed to Dyson Williams. He was ready when the shot came and saw it the whole way. Q, big pivot point in this game. Seven and a half to go with the extra man. Point three one with a push. 30 seconds. We reset to 60. We'll go to 60. So turn quick, locate the ball, and see it all the way. It was a textbook, textbook by Matt Nunes, who works under the tutelage of Kip Turner. That's the foul at the tail end of that sequence. This man up so hard to defend. What's Virginia trying to do? What's Duke's counter? That's one you'll give him. McConvey from about 14. Take away the skip passes and deny entry into the paint. Keep him on the perimeter if you're the defense. Duke packing it in. Cormier goes five hole. That's six for Peyton Cormier. Every time it feels Duke is on the verge of pulling away and riding this into twilight. Here's Virginia with another run at 16-13. Critical goal on the extra man. Watch the big box fake. Works the defense. Five hole between the wickets. A driving rainstorm in Charlottesville, Virginia. It has not deterred Brennan O'Neill. A nine-point evening for the Duke superstar. Showcasing his incredible toolbox of skills, whether it's a jump shot from the outside, a three-quarter arm rip in space, the pump fake and go. Deception to shoot with a sliver of an angle. It's been all there. <laughs> Having some fun. You see in the leadership component, O'Neill, the junior from St. Anthony's on Long Island, one of the most sought after young players. I think he verbal Penn State when he was in eighth grade. He's now a junior, a member of Team USA. That, that's senior level. That's pro guys. He tried out and made a team comprised of pros. And after this game, he's gonna be the favorite. He and CJ Kirst of Cornell for the Tuarton Trophy. When you see what he did against a Virginia defense that has all-America caliber players like Kastner and Sawstead, now to me, he's the front runner. And if Duke holds on, they've got a real chance to be the number one team in the country on Monday. And plus, you factor in, like, how many turnovers that, like, how many bad plays or turnovers or questionable decisions has he made? Six about, goals on nine shots. About, like, none. Here comes McIntosh. Missed the cage. He had helm. He had helm with, with, with the leaner there. He looks down low. You give the goalie all your body language down low. You look at his feet, and you duck, and then you shoot it high. He had him. Schellenberger lost. Brower had it knocked away momentarily. Guy slipping on this turf. McIntosh. Charging against the short stick, didn't get anything on it. Schellenberger on the inside. That's a, a pass. And that will be Duke ball. M2 
empty net. Empty net. And for Virginia, the danger when you ride with Cormier out there, he, he doesn't give you what some of the other guys do in that 10-man ride. Can't. Cormier looked gassed, chasing for that last loose ball. They've made him work. They have made Cormier work. He's got more than a handful of goals, but it's taken Virginia out of their base offense. Six goals for Cormier on 14 shots. 14 shots, one guy. And you can see him trying to get to the sideline. Duke turns it over. Another chance for Virginia. Five minutes to go now. Sawstead's pass knocked down. Loose ball. O'Neill vacuums it. And that's a fresh 80 for Duke. Do you pump the brakes or do you go? You get organized. 17 turnovers by the Cavaliers. Virginia stays in zone. They put Caputo 13 on this first midfield line. Good passer, great decision maker. Virginia, though, goes back to man. Man-to-man -man defense. Caputo running for Balsamo right now on this first midfield line. Next Friday, 6 Eastern, ACC Network, Virginia and North Carolina. Carolina's got a lot of young pieces. Some transfers starting to gel. They're an intriguing team. A very the second good defense. half of this season. A, a, a defense and goalie that, that I think you can rely on. Uh, Tyre, their faceoff man, is scoring goals in bunches, and the attack is clicking with Logan McGovern. It's the midfield scoring. And if they can get a little more midfield scoring, they need like one more big time win. Ledman beats his man, hits the side of the net. It does not reset the shot clock. Denenza out to McAdory. He'll fire, Nunes gobbles it off. Matt Nunes has picked it up. He's looked apart today. He's on all his misses. That's gonna be a penalty Why? against Why? Duke. Why, this looked clean. John Donowski can't believe it. I, 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 I'm in his corner. I didn't see this one. Virginia has three extra man goals today and now you're giving them another opportunity with 3.38 to go. Sawstead turns. And what do you think? McAdory, they call the push. <laughs> Cormier's got six goals. Shuts back to Cormier. Now Schellenberger. Schellenberger from up top over to Garno. Fires a missile. Second goal for Garno. It's a two-goal game with 3.18 to go. And for Virginia, all evening, it's felt like Sisyphus pushing the rock up the mountain. Every time they get close, Duke responds. They've got it back to two with 3.18. And what's it about this game? What's it about this sport? Next goal is what matters most. And always has been and always will be. And if you're a Virginia fan, you got to be enthused because Pete, Pete Garno, he's caught a little heater now. Had a big goal last week at Arlotta Stadium against Notre Dame. He's got two today. He's found his stroke. He's found his confidence. He is a dangerous feet set right handed shooter. Two man up goals today. Eight extra man goals for his career. Schellenberger had his third assist. All have come on the extra man. Duke wins the face off. Each draw magnified here in the final minutes. Clock and score. Coach Danowski will keep the official insight in terms of timeouts. He's got two, so does Virginia. Quint, you go back to that 2019 national semifinal. Duke up two with a minute to go. And the ball off a dead ball, a sideline clear. They turn it over. Virginia comes back, ties it, and then eventually wins it in two overtimes. I think if you played that scenario out ten times, lucky, lucky to be to see that again. Yep. McAdory. 
20 to shoot. We come up on two minutes to play. Well, this is O'Neal time right now. Shot clock dwindling down. He'll Game go right line. at Sawstead. O'Neal defended well, fires. It'll be Duke ball, six to shoot. McAdory will trigger. Nice 2 -on one to go. Cade Sawstad and Nish, good call there. He held his own on the corner. McAdory feeding Dyson Williams behind the back. The crafty Canadian. <laughs> Don't relax. You can't relax a second nowadays. These guys are so talented. The fans understand how important this possession is right now. You feel it. Kastner across the timeline. Shuts. McConvey, Virginia needs one more. Now Connor, the third midfielder, less than 90 seconds. Connor, down the alley, against the short stick gray. Connor can't get underneath, no flag. Connor dumps it off to Schutz. Tough defense by Gray, 20 and white. Now Gray's got to work against Schutz. Schellenberger, a minute to go. Virginia down two. Can Duke hang on? Does Virginia come back? Great defense here by Duke. Shot clock running down. McConvey spun around. He's got to give it up. Now it's Cormier against Stevenson. He's going to have to give it up. Almost turns it over, ball is loose in front. And it's a loose ball hold against Duke. Virginia ball, fresh 60, that doesn't really matter. Only 37 seconds to go on the game clock. And a timeout by Lars Tiffany. What a magnificent defensive sequence by the Blue Devils. I talked about it earlier in this game, how the defensive midfielders, Jack Gray, Aiden McGuire, Charlie O'Connor, Jake Caputo, the best, the most improved unit for Duke. I tell you, everyone's just holding their own matchup. Look at Kenny Brower, man. He has played an All-American caliber game, the senior from Massapequa. This guy who started every game in his career, and he has stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Connor Schellenberger today and erased him off the scorecard. Wilson Stevenson, look at him dig in here. He gets underneath Cormier, lifts him up. The double team is well-timed, and then they take bodies. This defense has delivered here. Duke has led throughout. Virginia has never had the lead in this game. And you look at the way this game has gone. Duke up 7-2. Virginia gets to within one at 8-7. Duke responds. Next thing you know, it's 12-8. Virginia gets to 12-11. Duke responds again. It's 16-11 Duke, and now back comes Virginia with three straight. That's where we are, 16-14. 37 seconds to go. Virginia's been here before. They've been here in this spot against Duke before. For me, this game's a forward to the month of April. We're going to see some great stuff this month. As league races crystallize, these two teams will be at the top. April's yeah. about improvement. It really is. Virginia improved after their loss to Maryland. They got it done last week at, at Notre Dame. They'll improve from this game, regardless of the result here. Virginia in its last nine games against Duke, 24% today. A tick better, but still five points below their season average. Duke showing man-to-man -man defense right here. Connor will initiate. He's got the short stick, Jake Caputo. Connor feeding the crease. Big save. Helm, the D3 transfer. 25 seconds to go. Now it's Schellenberger. Without a goal today, only one shot. This one hits the wow. turf, Duke has it. All they have to do is run out the clock. That save, Helm on the near post with the body save like a hockey goalie. That's going in. It almost did, final ticks, death, taxes, and Duke over Virginia and lacrosse. 17 straight. Regular season wins for Duke against Virginia. The Blue Devils 
have now won 22 of the last 24 against Virginia. Duke knocks off the number one team in the country. The good thing, Quint, this is the first of two meetings between these two. Well, we get to see Duke and Virginia over at Koskinen in just a few weeks. They're just getting started in April. Duke's to be the new number one. ACC dominating the RPI right now. Notre Dame, Duke, and Virginia up top. Watch this save, though, by Helm. You talk about angle play all the time. He steps to the post. Look at the big step he takes with that right foot, and he closes it down like a hockey goalie going pipe to pipe. The lacrosse goal, six by six, that's an awful long way. His flexibility on display. The graduate transfer from St. Lawrence. Will Helm email Duke.